morning. This is Erica Navian with KCPS Homeroom, your episode of STEM Remake Learning and All Things Real World Learning. I have with me today Callan Zine and Ann Zimmerman of KC STEM Alliance. They're going to tell us some great things that are happening in our community that's going to make things very interesting in the near future. So what can you tell me and share with our parents about what they can do to help their students, their families, everyone learn so much more about STEM skills? So, Which one um, of you? Yes. Um, we're delighted to be here. So thank you so much. Hello to all the Kansas City Public School families. Um, so you know, as a teacher and a mother, that learning can happen anywhere. So our jobs as teachers and parents is to help our children get curious about the world and go out and explore and learn new things. So if you look at real world learning, that first step is exploration. So explore something new, develop a new interest, engage in more activities, find a new passion, and then get immersed to learn more. So at the STEM Alliance, we know STEM activities help develop critical thinking problem solving skills that help young people solve real world problems. So we also believe there's a little bit of STEM in everything and that STEM is for everyone. So we want young people to have fun doing STEM. We're passionate about introducing young people to a variety of experiences that nurtures their curiosity to go explore. So that's why we are super excited to um, bring Remake Learning Days to Kansas City. Remake Learning Days. I've been seeing a lot of that all over Twitter and I'm really excited, but can you show us all the details through your elaborate descriptions <laughs> of what Remake Learning Days is going to be all about? What is Remake Learning Days? So Remake Learning Days across America is a festival of hands-on innovative learning coming to Kansas City this spring, May 1st through the 10th. Um, so we believe great learning happens when parents play and learn alongside their children, whether that's in the kitchen, measuring sugar, or outside in the garden, planting a seed, or anything that piques their curiosity. So especially for our youngest learners, they learn through play. So if we can make it fun, and when you play and learn alongside your, ch your child, then they know that it's important to you, and they, um, they have more fun. I just seem to think that I am involved in those types of things at all times, no matter where I am and no matter who I'm with. And I'm just really excited about all the opportunities for um, all of our families across the community. So can you tell them who's all involved? What can they expect? So we really want everyone to get a chance to participate in Remake Learning Days. So we're partnering with schools, neighborhoods, museums, organizations, uh, to host a variety of free or low-cost experiences. And um, there's some in-person events, there's some hybrid, and lots of virtual activities. So that even if you can't get out and about, you can take part and be a part of some of those experiences at home. And we're really especially grateful to the DeBruce Foundation, who is providing some grant um, funding to help more organizations participate. So there's lots going on. I'm so excited that and grateful that I was a recipient of one of the awards that Duda Bruce had. And we're going to have events here at Manual Career and Technical Center, whether we're in person or virtual. And I'm excited just to spend that week going through the city. I think I'll start at one end of the town and go to the other and just go to all the different things. There'll be something for everyone, um, no matter your ability or your interest. So I'm really, really excited. So. I know they're anticipating lining up their calendar. So what kind of events can they expect to find? Yeah, well, Erica, there are actually six learning themes as part of Remake Learning Day. So in addition to science and technology and making, we have arts and youth voice, and there's even a, an outdoor learning. So no matter which way you like to explore things, you're gonna find something of interest. There's even a professional development track for educators. So you can search professional development and find a couple of workshops that will help um, bring more engaged learning to kids across the community. 
That's going to be exciting. I know that our entire ecosystem is going to be so enriched from the teachers to the parents to the kids, and they'll really start to see themselves um, capable of doing so much more in the learning that we've been doing organically. We will see the value in that, and I think we'll appreciate that um, so much more. So can you share a few more examples of how families can participate, um, about what our teachers can do, and just utilizing the unique um, offerings that will happen within Kansas City. Yeah, as Ann mentioned, there there is a mix of both in-person and virtual opportunities. A few of the in-person events that sound exciting to me um, include, there is a Mathapalooza in the park. So you can actually go out to the park with your family and have fun playing games. And at the same time, you're sneaking in math concepts while having a great time together. Um, Stoneland Puppet Theater is offering a free show with some hands-on activities in the garden so you can get some outdoor learning, um, some arts all mashed together there, um, some STEM lessons too. Uh, the Urban Bucket Brigade is doing a drumming workshop at Kansas City Young Audiences, which sounds like a lot of fun. Um, very noisy. Very noisy. I'll bring my earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want to sneak some geometry in, there is going to be a string art activity by Make 48, which is a great television show all about making and inventing. They're going to be out at Union Station with that activity. They're also making a stop at Operation Breakthrough with some demonstrations on making and you can see where the, all the exciting things happen. Um, Kaleidoscope, we've missed them for field trips during the pandemic, but they have a great kit where you can make your own kaleidoscope at home, as well as some virtual workshops in the mix. Um, you can learn about how animation works with Digistory KC, how to use a green screen to make your own cool backgrounds in your videos. There are just all kinds of options, and we just encourage everybody to go out to remakelearningdays.org slash Kansas City. That is the landing page for all of these activities. And that's where you can get started. You can search by theme, you can search by age range, you can search by geography. So that is where you wanna start. Um, one other thing we wanted to share is uh, just to build a sense of community around Remake Learning Days. We also have a series of Try This at Home activities. And these are going to air each day, May 3rd through 7th on the NBC Action News midday show Casey Spotlight segment. So that's in the middle of the day, but they'll also be on our website if you can't catch it live. Each day we're gonna have a simple activity that doesn't require a lot of material and somebody fun to demonstrate it. And then we're inviting the community to play along at home to try the activity and share their results with the hashtag of the day. So just as an example, um, we're going to talk about um, how to measure your own strike zone as we get into full-fledged baseball season. And you can compare that with your family members and maybe even with some famous baseball players. So that's um, one way we're going to invite everybody to get out and chalk the walk to celebrate Remake Learning Days. And we have a great mural being planned that will be um, put together at Crown Center so you can go in person to see what that looks like and then chalk your own sidewalk to celebrate Remake Learning Days. We're going to plant a seed with the Kansas City Community Gardens. So that's something everybody can do at home and see how, see how your experiment goes. We're stepping into the kitchen, like Ann mentioned, with the American Royal to look at barbecue sauce. And then we're going to wrap things up with bridge building. And we've got a great um, celebrity guest to help us walk through that with um, Mayor Quentin Lucas. So he's going to show how you can do a little bridge building competition with your siblings or with your classmates um, or just for yourself. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I just cannot believe, like I said, I'm going to get out my calendar. Well, first, I'm going to go to RemakeLearningDays.com, Kansas City find your page, get my calendar, and start booking out all the places that I want to go across the city and all the things that I want to do as a teacher, as a mom, as just somebody who loves having fun. This just sounds incredible for everyone to experience. I think no matter how old you are, you'll be able to find something that you like and of your interest. And I think 
families will even discover things that they didn't know they liked before. So this is a really um, great thing that we are offering for our community. And this is our first time of having this. So we're coming in um, with fireworks and all kinds of things. So I'm really excited that you all are here from the KC STEM Alliance to explain all of these things. And I'm sure our kids are gonna be able to see all the things that they can do on your excerpts um, during the week. Can you tell us again, where they'll be able to find those, um, Callan? Yes, so go to remakelearningdays.org slash Kansas City, and that will bring you everything you need. There will be a special tab for the Try This at Home activities, as well as some special um, tags for Math Week if you're taking part of that. So lots of fun ways to connect, but that's where you want to go to get started. Remakelearningdays.org slash Kansas City. This has been incredible. Thank you so much for being on KCPS Homeroom. And I'm Erica Mabian, your iSpark CTE coordinator. And I will see you next time with more real world learning with STEM. Have a great day. Thank you all for being my guest today on our show, Ms. Zimmerman and Design. Bye. Hey Kansas City, it's Chef Tom. Today, we are gonna do something really cool. We are gonna use eight ingredients to make guacamole. Everybody has their secret ingredient for guacamole, but really, guacamole is just simply cilantro, lime, tomato, jalapeno, onion, avocado, and salt. That's it, okay? Now, you can dress it up with other things, but this is the truest form of guacamole that we can make. So, we're gonna be doing a lot of knife work today. What's the first thing we have to do? That's right, we gotta sharpen our knives. And we take our knife the same number of times down on each side. I'm partial to 10. And when we check our knife, we always go across the blade, and that is wicked sharp, and that's what we're looking for because if you're in the kitchen, you always want a super sharp knife in case you get cut. A super sharp knife slices, a dull knife tears. So ultimately you'll get a worse cut using a dull knife, okay? Let's keep on going with this one. All right, with both knives nice and sharp, it's time to put on our gloves. So what we're going to be doing today really is all knife skills, okay? We're going to start with our jalapenos. I don't like my guacamole too spicy, I'm only using one. And I know that we've gone through how to cut up jalapenos before, but we're going to run through it again. We are going to go ahead and leave the seeds and the white membrane in and cut them just like that. Okay, you always want your gloves on when you're cutting jalapenos, okay? And we're gonna take these guys, and you can see how sharp, sharp, sharp this knife is. We're gonna cut them lengthways. And the thing is, you don't have to try and be fast at this. There's no reason to. You just take your time. But the cut that we're doing is called a brunoise. It's a very small eighth of an inch by eighth of an inch cut, okay? Because we don't want anybody getting too much jalapeno in one bite. So we are in a live working kitchen when we're filming this. So if you hear some background noise, that's just other people working in here. So we got these beautiful jalapenos into our bowl. And essentially, 
This entire recipe, this is exactly how it's gonna work. We're gonna cut something up and put it in a bowl. Now, these tomatoes are Roma tomato, R-O-M-A. They're very easy to work with. But again, you want your knife super sharp. Okay, turn them. Just keep on going with them. And these tomatoes you want just as small as your jalapeno, okay? Because a mole is a mixture. And this is guacamole. So this is a vegetable mixture. There are some moles uh, in Latin cooking that they actually put some chocolate in, and that's really amazing. But this is just a simple vegetable mixture with a little salt. And now you'll see as I'm cutting that my hand is in the claw position with my thumb and back, because again, we don't do that and we got that thumb out here that's what's going to happen we're going to take off the, ed, the end of the thumb it's not good okay right in our bowl now got beautiful red onion again we're going to take the top and the bottom off the onion we're going to cut it right in half now, I don't think that we need more than a half an onion in here because this is a pretty small batch, but it's always gonna be what's the best for flavor. I'm gonna grab a towel and wipe some of the tomato off my board and give my knife a wipe. This is a sanitizer towel. So this is food safe sanitizer that I'm wiping my board and my knife with. Get rid of that guy. All right. When we cut an onion, remember, the method is to go across most of the way back toward the end of the onion. Then you're gonna take your knife, and this is where an extremely sharp knife comes in handy, and you're gonna go across the onion about two-thirds of the way back, and then it's all about shaving. We're just gonna shave that red onion. And believe me, this takes some practice. I was not just naturally good at this. In fact, when my older brother and I lived together, he had always complained that my onions weren't cut perfect. Because when I'd get down to the stem, I never took it across this way and finished it off properly. I thought, well, it's just you and me. And I just threw it in there. But ever since then, it's made me think every time I've cut an onion. Yeah, look at that. You can already see that this is gonna be colorful and delicious. Just get everything off our board here. All right, next, we have our avocados and our cilantro left. I'm gonna go ahead and chop up some cilantro first. Look at that. Cilantro is truly one of my favorite herbs. Super flavorful, smells so good when you're cutting it. And the thing is, this does not have to be minced. You know, you can do kind of a rough cut with this. That's about how far we want our cilantro. Not much further than that. Okay, I'm just gonna get that right in our bowl. All right, now, if I'm at home, this is the opportunity I'm gonna take to go ahead and go wash my cutting board. But being as we are pressed for time a little bit, we're gonna take this board and we're gonna turn it right onto our sanitizer towel, okay? But we are gonna take a second and sanitize this knife one thing I want to show you, you guys, when you're wiping off a knife, the various parts of a knife, this is the blade over here. 
This is the spine here, okay? The spine is the end that cannot cut you. When you're wiping a knife, you always wipe from spine to blade, okay? Always spine to blade. Never ever turn it and wipe the knife against the towel, okay? All right, we are down to avocados. Avocados, when you cut them, you go into the side and all the way around, okay? You turn the avocado, Ooh, look at that, that's a beauty. Now, I take my knife and I pull my pit that way, all right? The thing is, you have to be very, very careful with working when working with avocados because avocados will move around on you, okay? There's another perfect one. But when you're going to get that pit, you just dig that knife in just maybe a quarter inch, a half at the most, okay? And a lot of people, sorry, I'm just gonna knock out these last two quick. A lot of people will cut up the avocado right in the rind. I'm gonna show you a little, in my opinion, better way, safer way, because a lot of times, if you take this avocado and start dicing it this way, you'll cut through this skin, and what's behind that skin? Your hand. Okay, seen a lot of people go to the hospital that way. So we're gonna show you a little better way today. Ooh, beautiful avocados. So usually, when you have four avocados, not every one of them is gonna be perfect. So we're pretty lucky today. So, now, we've got our avocados. We're just gonna take them and cut them this way. And we're gonna take and peel them. Now, we do not necessarily need to dice these avocados, okay? Some people will dice them if the avocado is not quite ripe, but these guys are really nice, they're really ripe. So we're just gonna peel them. You know, like I always say, you don't have to be in any great hurry. You know, cooking is not about rushing, okay? If you're in a hurry in the kitchen, you are gonna run a chance at maybe cutting yourself or burning yourself. Thing is, you just need to take your time. You know, you, you'll notice that every time we're in here, all of my ingredients are prepped up and ready to go because that's what you need to do in order to do a good job. You need to take your time, have your ingredients ready, do your mise en place, which is everything in its place. And believe me, this is a nice big bowl of guacamole. You know, um, myself, I love guacamole, so I always make a nice big bowl. Some people don't love it that much. Some people are not big fans of uh, cilantro. But I'm a big fan of cilantro and guacamole. And make sure that when you're peeling these avocados, that you are really checking them to make sure you have all that peeling off of them, okay? Because sometimes you'll get a chunk of peeling that stays on there and nobody wants to get that in their guacamole. Yeah, this one's a little stubborn, so guess what? We're gonna take the knife, and we're just gonna cut him off quick, okay? Now, because we've been touching the outsides of these rinds as we were getting this ready, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change gloves. 
You know why? Because we're gonna mix this up right with our hands. We're gonna mash up our avocados in here. And I usually put two teaspoons of salt. So one, two. I would hope that you would measure. Um, I've been doing this for a number of years. So once in a while, especially something like this, where we're gonna wind up tasting this to see where our flavor profile is. Because if you don't taste the food you're making, then you're just taking it for granted. All right, so we have got our hands deep in this guacamole. We're smashing up these beautiful avocados. And if you look, you can see nice chunks of avocado in there. And that's the way you want your guacamole to be. You don't want it to be smooth and pasty, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this glove and we're gonna taste this because I'm gonna tell you right now, you can't make good food without tasting it. So let's see what we got. Oh man, there are days that the gods smile upon you and this is one of them. Absolutely delicious. Let's get it into a bowl. Just like that. I'm gonna set this bowl aside. And there you go, friends. Chips and guacamole, perfect for any gathering. Hey, listen, I hope you try this. I hope you're successful at it. I hope to send me a picture at T-B-E-L-I-S-L-E -E at kcpublicschools.org. Enjoy your food. Have a great day. I chose manual because it's challenging and fun and it can help me with college. I chose manual because I wanted to get a jump start in my career with culinary arts. I chose manual to acquire skills I'd use in real life. I chose manual because I want to be an ER doctor and being an EMT is my first step. Kickstart your future today at Manual Career and Technical Center. Manual is open for all 11th and 12th grade students in both Kansas and Missouri. Learn more today at enrollkc.org slash manual or call 816-418-5200. The desire to create lives within each of us. From Grammy-winning producers and musicians, to NBA stars, to Navy admirals and Medal of Honor recipients, to internationally renowned artists and beloved local muralists, Paseo graduates have been creating their own success, their own history, their own legacy since 1926. Now it's your time. Create your future at Paseo Academy of Fine and Performing Arts. Learn more at enrollkc.org slash Paseo. Good morning, Kansas City, on this wonderful Friday. I hope you're excited for another wonderful episode of what we are calling Life After KCPS. My name is Chris Odom. I am excited to get to be the host of this show and talk to a number of people who some I've known, some I've not, but one thing they all have in common is that they all came from Kansas City Public Schools. So on this show today, we are visited by a student who I did get to know back in the day at Paseo Academy. Um, in the time there, she was known as Kosha Johnson, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I had that burned into my head. And today she's joining us as Kosha Chandler. Um, so let's let her unwind for you. Kind of what year did you graduate? And then kind of re remind us of that year. What do you remember about that year? And then we want to know, like, what happened right after life after Casey? <laughs> take, take us into that that moment that's right after high school. And uh -huh. how did you know what you were going to do? Yeah, so I graduated in uh, 2011, class of 11. Woo -woo. Um, it was a amazing experience. Senior year was my favorite year, actually, at Paseo. Um, from everything from senior week to um, uh, senior showcase, like all of that was just amazing. So afterwards, I graduated. Oh, and if, just FYI, I was a dance major. Shout out to dance uh, department. <laughs> um, so afterwards, I still was able to study and dance. Um, I actually um, got in contact with a, a dance artist named Christopher Peacock, which I'm 
think you, I'm pretty sure you know who that is. Mm -hmm. um, and he actually started a dance company called Victory in Motion Contemporary Dance Company. And so um, I began um, training or continuing my training with him. And we also were performing in Kansas City. Um, so I did a little of that. And then also um, after graduating Paseo, I went another route and I actually became a licensed massage therapist. I know that's like totally different from uh, dance, <laughs> but I found that very, very interesting. I got to learn more about the body and um, healing natures and just helping other people overcome their stress, anxiety, um, even depression and just things like that. And I just fell in love with it. So I went to school for about uh, 15 months had to get about 1500 hours in school for that past the Inblex test, which is how you get your license. And now I am working at a spa um, full time and as well as being a wife and a mother <laughs> of three gorgeous children. So life has definitely uh, graduated after uh, high school. <laughs> Thanks for that update. That's fantastic. And yes. I know you mentioned that you're a wife, that I know one particular thing is that not Hi. everybody meets the person they're going to be with the rest of their life in high school. But yes. Did, yes. You, did that happen for you? And did you guys know each other that much in high school or did that happen afterwards? Actually, it happened afterwards. We we didn't know each other too well in high school, but we knew of each other. Yeah. Um, but um, so, yeah, after high school, we kind of just you know, reunited, I guess you can say, and it's been a great five years that we've been married now, and yeah, it's been awesome, and he's, he was actually in the music department, so we kind of, you know, clash when it comes to dance and music, or collaborate, rather, when it comes to the two, and it's pretty awesome, so yeah. <laughs> wow. How cool, yeah, to get to, to have an artistry shared in a relationship, yeah. that's really important and very cool. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Okay, so, so you're doing massage therapy. Are you still involved in dance in some ways? Um, in some ways, yes. I actually also picked up another style, which is um, Kansas City Two-Step, um, which is pretty well known in the city now. Um, you have a partner and you guys, you know, do the basic and then from there, you know, do all the tricks and stuff, which is really cool. So I learned how to do that. And then um, on and off, I've been teaching that. So, you know, teaching couples or people who just had a two step. Um, and then from, you know, now and again, I'll get requests of choreography to help out with or um, dance at different churches, praise dancing. So I, I'm definitely still involved in the dance community. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, it just doesn't go away all of a sudden if you get that. Right, exactly. That answer, right? I feel <laughs> exactly. the same way about the arts. It's not just going to disappear from mm -hmm. my life. I, I wouldn't, there's no way I could keep going without it. It's just, it's exactly. part of, it's part of what I need to be happy. So. Yep, exactly. Well, that's yes. fantastic. So <laughs> if, if we could kind of think about the young people who are out there, mm -hmm. uh, were there things you heard when you were in high school that you think you still utilize today? I know I haven't asked you to like think of those before now, but mm -hmm. even concepts or, or advice or just some kind of sense of direction that you might have gained from somewhere. Um, that's what I think we're looking for when we're in that start of our lives right after yeah. high school. What, right. what might you suggest to some young people who need to hear some things like that? Yeah, basically, I would suggest um, no matter what your art is, your craft, um, if you feel that it's important to you and it's enrooting in you, go for it no matter what nobody says. Um, no matter what life throws at you, you know, just keep it going. Um, I know sometimes, you know, we can never tell what life is going to bring or what may come about it. So, of course, if other courses come along, then definitely, you know, be adventurous and, you know, just just be you. That's what, that's the most important thing in life is always be you because there's only one you. So just be you and live to the fullest. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. And you yes. start to figure that out the more you keep just trying out stuff, right? Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah, you may you may go into Paseo being a vocalist and come out being a dancer or visual artist, or you, you never know. Just, just I feel like trying new things is awesome. But Paseo is also 
amazing like a start point for you to figure it out and then just go from there yeah okay well you've heard a lot about all the offerings of paseo uh today and and you've heard that sometimes on this show remembering that mostly that's the people i know and if you're interested in telling the story of another building in our city we have had guests from other schools um i just Mm -hmm. talked to somebody actually this morning who is a teacher uh, in our district who went to Southwest. So if you're also a person that came from our schools, this show is for you to come on and talk to me about that. It's called Life After KCPS. Um, and I think it's special to have all of our guests. We're, we're grateful for Kosha this morning. Um, yeah. let, let's send us out. How about something you want to tell Kansas City? Because like occasionally, Young people aren't the only ones who might come across this show. What, right. What might you say? What I would say to my own city is keep going. We're getting really somewhere so quickly and addressing mm-hmm. some of the things that have always needed to be addressed. And I'm excited and proud okay. to be involved in that process. So let's keep going, city. Like if we can win a Super Bowl, we can do some serious stuff yeah. in our city too. Yeah. And we can win a Super Bowl again, not saying that we just, you know, I can only do that once. Right. <laughs> right. What, what might you tell our city, Kosha? Um, I definitely agree with your statement. Just keep going. We have so much talent here in Kansas City. I do not believe that we need to travel to L.A. or New York to make it like, no, we are so talented. We are. I would say we are equivalent to L.A. and, and New York. That's how talented Kansas City is. So I would say just keep thriving, keep collaborating. I see so many collaborations here in Kansas City. That's awesome. Um, and just, yeah, just keep pushing forward. Let's get our name out there any way we can, any, you know, positive messages that we can. Um, the person that did the Black Lives Mural uh, all around Kansas City, that was amazing. Like, And that was Kansas City's own artist. So I know we can do amazing things. This is just the beginning for us. <laughs> very cool shout out to harold smith who also works in our district who was one of the muralists nice. and, and got to plan one of the designs and the person i also worked with back when he was at paseo academy so amazing yeah, yeah see <laughs> really amazing to see really paseos even in the middle of the city you know kind yeah. of right there mm-hmm. where it could in some ways just spread from all that started right there in that exactly center. exactly so, um, yes <laughs> if you've never seen paseo or again you want to check it out it's a wonderful place to visit. And eventually mm-hmm. I think we're going to have some in-person shows. There's a dance program, you know, once or twice a year. Yes. We have poets that perform at Paseo. Mm-hmm. Uh, amazing theaters where three different theaters are in that one building. They have a black exactly. box, uh, what mm-hmm. we call the recital hall, and then the main stage. So working there for so many years, it, you know, you get to just walk and be in these theater spaces. And then yes. you, you feel like you belong there. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Thank you, you, Kosha. It's been wonderful having you with us this morning. If you're listening out there, you heard it from Kosha. Just keep pushing. Keep trying out new stuff. Right. Yes. Yes. And you'll be you'll be happy like it seems she is. Right. Yes. (laughs) Thank Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kansas City. (laughs) Have a great Friday and a good weekend. Good morning, Kansas City. Welcome to an exciting episode of Real World Friday. Uh, I'm joined this morning by an awesome person and a student I knew when I worked at Paseo Academy. Uh, This is another featured episode of what we've been calling lately Life After KCPS, and a chance for us to catch up and find out uh, what some of our students have been doing uh, after they may have left high school. So this morning, we're joined by one of those people, and I've got the honor to talk to him today. So let's let's find out. First things first from Mr. Pierre Owens here. Uh, Pierre, what's been going on with you since high school? Well, I, I've been going to community college for a, for a year, then dropped out, then, it, then a few shortly between that time, I've been going to this place called SRO Video, where I met the manager, Meg, who used to work there back in 2007. We became good friends. During, in February 2008, I got in trouble with an English teacher, with an English, English instructor. I was like following her and stuff, so I never spoke to her again. 
that that incident haunted me for the rest of my life. A year later, I started doing some job shadowing with K, K, we have KC, which is now called Ability KC. Interesting. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing some of that. So you were working um, with Ability KC, and I know you've been involved in doing, what was the camp you were part of? Camp Encourage. Yeah, Camp Encourage. How did you get involved in that? Well, this is, this is a great story behind that. Uh, back in 2017, I did a viral video from a guy named Christopher Omer, who runs his own organization called Special Books by Special Kids. And then I went to this event that was hosted by Kim McCurge downtown. And the, the program director, the executive director, Kelly Lee, spotted me. And she said she saw me in that video. And then we became instant friends. We went out to lunch. And I started getting engaged in, in her mission. Nice. Very cool. So you've been involved in helping some other students find their path when you go to those camps. Is that kind of what it's like? Yes. Okay. And so why is that important to you? Because I want to make a difference in someone's life and inspire them. Very cool. And so you had some experiences like that at Paseo, right? I think I remember. What year, what year did you graduate from Paseo Academy? 2007. 2007. Okay, very good. And you were a creative writing major? Yes. Right. And you did a lot of things also. Um, like, I think you have some visual art that you do still, right? Like, yeah. you, you're doing a lot of that. Art. You're doing yeah. a lot of that. That's very cool. You drew a profile picture for me, and you're a commissioned artist, right? right. So will you tell me what that means? Being a commissioned artist gives me the chance to give back to other people, to, to get back to those who really need the service, who really need a piece of my work in their home. Yeah. And to inspire people. But it's, all, but, but it's also a chance for you to say this is what I do and this is something that's worth money, right? Right. Yeah, that's very important. I, I think that's really neat that artists survive by selling their work, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about the money. It's about, it's about the quality of the work. Okay. Right. And put this phone on a person's face. Yeah. So what are some of your favorite ones that you've done for people? Just... Out of memory. Um, uh, I think I did these three cats in this family portrait. And I think I did a couple's portrait with a cat on it. And a, I think I did a dog with an alien on it. <laughs> and these are all requests that are coming in from people that, yeah. you, that you meet on, on social media. Yeah, that's really awesome. Yeah. I've, I've seen that happen in because I've also made a request, like I said, and you made an awesome profile pic uh, image for me. So, well, that's really fun. What, um, so I, I even know you had a uh, image of yours on a coffee bag. Is that right? Yes, back in 2016. Is it still out there or have they stopped making that coffee? I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. I want to find one because I love coffee. I'd love to have a bag of that coffee. I'm not sure they still make make that image anymore okay but that's special i've never had anything i've drawn on a bag of coffee so that's really cool um all right well what else would you say let's say we're, we're watching these shows and we're making these episodes for students to think about how they might find their path after high school or what what it takes to really make it out there in the real world right do you have any advice for young people today of what they need to do to, to really, you know, be happy and, and live the way that they might want to? Mm-hmm. Okay. Be confident. Be striving. Always be real of what you do. Just get yourself out there. If you want something, go out there and get it, no matter what it is. Always follow your dreams. Never give up on yourself and your goals. Love it. I think that's that's wise words today from Pierre Owens. And um, let's see, what else could we explore a little bit more, Pierre? What else do you think um, you could share with listeners? Give us another idea of what's been going on with you. Any other any other recent things you're working on or any projects you're involved in? I'm not working on anything right now, but 
I will take give you a story about about the, this this reunion I had in April of 2017. All right, it was the best reunion ever. Really, what made it so you know, special? You know your old coworker Allison Harper Crane. I do. She's a wonderful teacher. Yeah. Yeah. She called me up and wanted me to do this art for artists and fundraiser event back in April 2017. A few months later, she was so happy to see me. I've hosted a couple of workshops in different classes. Yeah. And the kids were were loving it. I taught them how to draw. And in the movie release release date thing, they would give me a couple of movies and I would give them that release date. Oh yeah. <clears throat> we haven't talked about that. So is that that's something you become kind of known for, right? What do you mean the yeah. movie explain to people who don't know what, what that means? What's the movie release thing? Because I know. Well, if you if you haven't noticed noticed this thing, this is a very good gift to mine, a great party trick. <laughs> Can give me any movie I would give you that release date. Really? Any movie in the whole world. Pulp fiction. October 14, 1994. I believe you. And I won't keep putting you to the test, but yeah, that's phenomenal. So that's amazing, Pierre. And it's something that I think when people first meet you, that they would never know about you, right? Right. How do, how do people react to you when they find out you can do something like that? They were, ex- they were surprised and shocked. Yeah. How does it feel to be able to do something like that? It feels wonderful. Does it really? I feel like I'm giving back by that, giving back to the people and putting a smile on their face. Interesting. Okay. Getting, them, getting them into movies. Gotcha. Gets them into movies. Well, yeah, it's certainly an amazing skill. Um, and I, I don't know how one works on that. Like, do you study the movies and, and memorize them or do they just kind of occur to you that way? I just study them. Like a college, college student studies for a test. Interesting. Okay. Well, we need to find a game show where you could go on there and, you know, uh, just know that category to the fullest. I think it, it seems like, you know, there should be a game show for that, but maybe we'll have to invent one. Cause I don't think there's a, a game show out there that does that, right? Like jeopardy or something. Um, well, that's amazing, Pierre. I, it's been fun catching up with you and I am excited to hear you're doing the things that you found most important to you when I knew you a long time ago. Uh, is, is that kind of what I'm noticing? You're still doing your art thing and you're still, you know, expressing to people about what it means to be you? Yes. Yeah, that is very awesome. So I, I appreciate you for doing that. And I wanted to just have a chance to have you on here. Do you want to have any parting words, kind of something to tell Kansas City or uh, students out there who might be listening this morning? Okay. Well, well. Always be creative. Always be honest. Don't let anything get you down. Always be inspired. If you're looking for something that you're that you're really into, go get it. You'll never know what you might find. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Kansas City, for listening this morning, and thank you, Pierre Owens. You've been a wonderful guest. I knew you would. Um, and let's make sure we keep in touch and and uh, reach out. Whenever you need uh, somebody to, you know, maybe buy another piece of art from you. I've got a new uh, blue healer who would make a really good subject. That's a really kind of charismatic looking dog with pointy ears. So may have to send you another commission down the road here and and see if if you want to do one of those again. And if you're listening now and you think you'd want to find a way to, to get a Pierre real made piece of artwork, Reach out to me if you want at at Kansas City Public Schools. My name is Chris Odom, and I'll be sure to put you in touch with me. So, again, thank you again, Pierre, for spending this time with us this morning. And we're out.
We are happy to have you visit our family here at Northeast Middle School. My name is Principal Shriver, and I am the principal here at Northeast Middle School. We serve students in the seventh and eighth grade in the historic Northeast neighborhood in Kansas City. Welcome to Northeast Middle, the home of the mighty Titans. Welcome to Northeast Middle. Transitioning to middle school is exciting, but it can also be scary. But that's what we're here for. I teach student success skills, a class where students get in touch with their emotions and learn how to stay on task in their courses. Hello, my name is Mir Nanaya. I am the parent liaison at Northeast Middle School. I communicate with parents, legal guardians, regarding school information, events, school advisory committee, and more. I love interacting with students' families every day. Hello and welcome. My name is Christine Disming, and I teach geography and economics here at Northeast Middle School. We have a safe and nurturing environment in our classrooms. Your student will enjoy learning here. Hi, I'm Laura Cole. I'm an eighth grade math teacher. Welcome to eighth grade. We offer advanced courses in all core subjects. Learning here is fun and rigorous because we care about our students and their academic experience. Northeast Middle School students are successful and prepared for high school. AVID, which stands for Advancement via Individual Determination, is a college and career readiness program. Students develop the skills they need to be successful in college starting in middle school. Most students continue their AVID course throughout high school with the same group of peers. Hi, I'm Mr. Fleming and I teach PE and Health at Northeast Middle School and we have a wide range of electives including choir, band, orchestra, visual arts, creative writing, and much more. Hello, my name is Kenneth Moore and I teach 7th, 8th grade choir. Our goal is to ensure our students get the very best academic opportunities. Our students maintain a well-rounded experience. Northeast Middle School is truly a diverse environment. We have scholars from all over the world and we have as many as 30 languages spoken in our building at any given time. To celebrate the diversity in our building, we host an international festival so our scholars can get a true taste of the world. Hi, I'm Ben Jonte. I'm the art teacher at Northeast Middle School. Project Lead the Way, one of our electives, provides our students with hands-on, real-world learning. This will give them experience in growing industries like computer science, design and robotics. Hello, I'm Ms. Shepard and I'm the athletic director here at Northeast Middle School. Here at Northeast Middle School we offer a variety of sports for boys and girls including basketball, track and field, soccer, wrestling, swimming, cross country, flag football, cheerleading, and volleyball. Thank you for taking the time to visit with us today here at Northeast Middle School. To learn more about our campus or to request a personal tour, please call 816-418-3400. We look forward to sharing with you more of the exciting things occurring at Northeast Middle School.
Kindergarten is great at Kansas City Public Schools. I know this, they have really good teachers. Uh, I know this is great school. They teach them stuff that I thought my kids would never be able to know at the age of five. Since deciding to send our kiddos to a neighborhood school, we've become a, even more of a part of our community. Now is the time to enroll your future kindergartner for the new school year. Visit enrollkc.org today. I chose manual because it's challenging and fun and it can help me with college. I chose manual because I wanted to get a jump start in my career with culinary arts. I chose manual to acquire skills I'd use in real life. I chose manual because I want to be an ER doctor and being an EMT is my first step. Kickstart your future today at Manual Career and Technical Center. Manual is open for all 11th and 12th grade students in both Kansas and Missouri. Learn more today at enrollkc.org slash manual or call 816-418-5200. The desire to create lives within each of us. From Grammy-winning producers and musicians, to NBA stars, to Navy admirals and Medal of Honor recipients, to internationally renowned artists and beloved local muralists, Paseo graduates have been creating their own success, their own history, their own legacy since 1926. Now it's your time. Create your future at Paseo Academy of Fine and Performing Arts. Learn more at enrollkc.org Paseo. I love Southeast because of the culture, the bank program, and restorative justice. I love Southeast because of the academic, sports, and students. I love Southeast because of the people, the energy, and the advanced classes. It's not a like. I love Southeast because the students here at Southeast are full of potential and they believe in achieving anything. We are, we are Southeast. 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 We stand. We stand. Shoulder, to shoulder. shoulder to shoulder. Join the Southeast family. Enroll today. I am Lincoln Middle. <laughs> At Lincoln Middle School, students discover their talents and passions, where teachers plant the seeds of lifelong learning. I am Lincoln Middle. Where excellence is nurtured. Students develop the skills to be successful in school, career, and beyond. Je suis Lincoln Middle. Lincoln Middle is the public school where your child will thrive and grow. Open a world of possibilities. Apply today. Learn more at enrollkc.org slash Lincoln Middle.